Hi, welcome to my blog today. My name is Tom Shu, and today we're going to do some more retouching. And in this video, instead of it Lightroom or Photoshop, we're going to use both. Okay, it's going to be probably a long video, so hopefully that uh, you guys can handle that. I'm going to show you a lot of cool tricks and things that you might use in your own workflows when you're retouching. What you see here is a picture of a good friend of mine. Her name is Jamie. She owns a studio that I like to use a lot for my training in my class. And she wanted me to take some pictures of her. She's just a wonderful person. And I thought I'd retouch them with you guys. Now, she had been working all day and been out and about. So I'm sure she's not going to appreciate me uh, showing her close up <laughs> after a long day. But, Jamie, I love you. And I'm sorry if you, uh, if you take offense to me using your images. Anyways, let's get started. So if we zoom into this picture, you can see that, you know, there's some skin work that needs to be done. And we need to maybe correct the white balance. Also, you can see, like, the skin of her chest and the skin of her face isn't the same tone. So we're going to address a lot of these issues right in Lightroom. Her eyes need to be brightened and colored. So we're going to just handle everything we can do in Lightroom. And then we're going to hand it off to Photoshop and finish up with some of the more difficult things that I like to do in retouching. And so here we go. First, I'll start with exposure and adjustments in the develop module. If you're not in the develop module, you can hit the D key. The D is in dog, and that will pull up the develop module for you. Okay, so let's start right here and let's set a white point. So if we're going to hold down the Alt key, and that's the option key on a Mac, and we're going to drag to the right and we're going to watch for clipping. And we started to clip that channel. We're going to back that off. Okay, so now we have a white point set. And I want to look and see how much we've blown out. Let's go over here to uh, fill the screen. And let's look at a one-to-one. -one. Okay. It looks like we still have a lot of detail in the face, so we're good there. So I'll go back to fill, fit to the screen, I should say. And now let's set a black point. Now I want to keep some detail still in this shirt, so I want to be careful not to clip all that stuff. So if we hold down the Alt key, and that's the Option key on the Mac, we'll back off. And you can see that right about there, we have a black point. It doesn't have to be completely solid black. You know, if you wanted to make sure you had a decent, a really good black point, you know, that would be more than enough. Okay, so now we would adjust our shadow detail. Okay, so we can look and s start to see if, hey, do we have enough shadow underneath of her neck? So we can zoom in there. And we can open those shadows up with this slider. Okay, so let's look at overall picture. Okay, and her face is starting to look like it's a little bit bright. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring our highlights down just a smidge so we can get that skin texture back. And that looks pretty good. All right. So now that we've got our exposure the way we want, we might want to kick in just a little bit of vibrance for color, maybe somewhere around 10. And let's look at her eyes. And we'll see if we bump in just a little clarity, about 5 or 6, that might, maybe 6 or 7, that might help tighten those eyes up a little bit. So we'll look at a before and after where we've already started. So we hit the backslash key. That'll show you a before and an after. Oh, let me let it settle in. That's before, and this is after. Okay. So, now let's get into some brush tools and some spot adjustments. So, I want to start with the skin. So, we'll grab our little um, the spot removal tool, and we'll click on little blemishes and things that we see on her face that we want to deal with. Ooh, control Z, I don't want that one to happen. If you hold down the space bar, you can adjust your subject. It looks like she has a little bitty mark right there on her nose. We'll take that away. See if it selects a place that you don't want to select. You just have to drag it to where you want. And we'll grab some of these little imperfections. And again, if it selects an area, that is not similar to the face that you like, you have to go back in and adjust it manually. Okay? So maybe we need to slide this one over just a hair. 
and we'll grab this one and we'll slide this one over here and we'll grab this one and you know it's real easy to pick apart a um, someone's face especially when you're zoomed into like right up on them life size bigger than life size you know and um, I mean I don't have enough courage to show you how my face looks so I can only imagine how anyone else would see themselves if they're on a video where somebody is doing an adjustment of them how that might make them feel so again I hope that uh, she doesn't mind this because at the end she's going to be really happy with the image okay let's get rid of this little guy here and let's get rid of this one little here and if you use the center mouse button you can adjust the size of this little thing um, maybe we'll grab this one little here and this little guy here okay and let's see here that looks like it's pretty good so now we'll go out of the spot healing tool and we'll go into one of my preset brushes which is the line diminisher anytime you use a new brush make sure you click on the new or you can click on the brush tool to reload it so now that we're here let's go ahead and grab the line diminisher okay if it my brushes drop below you'll be able to see the title of the brush here so let's go ahead and start trying to work with some of these lines that you see and sometimes if they don't go away with one application you can hit new again and stack these brushes you know we're working with a a pretty unique light source it's actually the um, the beauty dish here and there's no diffuser on it so it's not really a soft light so it doesn't do any favors to uh, to people's face when you get real close up on them okay so let's come over here and we see maybe a small line under there that's a dimple or something like that we'll maybe knock it down just a hair and we'll come in here and just grab any little imperfection you see that you might want to soften up works great for little imperfections you can hit whole areas with it so we'll come in here and hit this nose a little bit and we'll just come down the whole nose a little bit and we'll come on our cheek come down here on her chin a little bit and I'm going to soften the skin when we get into Photoshop actually I'm going to use my skin softener brush here in just a second we're just going to go ahead and use this line diminisher and I'm going to hit new and we're going to reapply some of these lines that I want to really knock flat I'm going for a really high fashion beauty look. Okay. Maybe we cut a couple under her eyes just a little bit. And we'll hit that on her nose. Sorry if I'm whispering. This is just kind of how I uh, talk when I'm dealing with these, uh, these videos. I want you to guys to kind of think what I'm thinking. But I don't want to be like that guy, you know, the happy little cloud guy that was a painter. You know, I'm I'm nothing like that. He's a he was a serious artist. And I'm just a photographer. Okay, so maybe we come in there and just clean up that transition on the cheek. This line diminisher preset brush, it saves a lot of time. Okay, so now we're gonna go in and we're gonna select new and we're going to grab the skin softening brush okay so it dropped below so it's I call it um, a soft skin brush okay and what we're going to do here is we're just going to apply this general I'm going to fit this to the screen actually I'm going to fill it okay so what we'll do here is with auto masking on okay what we're going to do is we're going to soften this whole thing and if you want to see where you're painting on if you hit the O key it will give you an overlay 
of uh, what this brush is actually doing. I selected the wrong brush here, so we have to go back and find the right brush that we were using. Okay, there it is. Okay, and we're not going to try to paint on the eyes, and we're, we're going to try to avoid the lip and the mouth, and we're going to erase that off. We got into the hair there, that's not a big deal. The auto masking does a pretty good job if you do your part, which is to say, you stay out of the hair. And so we'll just delete what we got off the hair right here. Okay, we're not trying to soften the hair. And let's zoom in here and let's remove any that we got on the lip. can add here. Ooh. I was holding the alt key when I painted there. Okay, looks like we got some over here on the lip here. Let's remove that. I don't want any on the lips at all. So let's go across the lips and leave a little bit on the outside. And we'll paint in here. Okay, it looks pretty good. Maybe get a little bit right there. And this is, again, the skin softening brush. We Remember, we don't want to paint on the eyebrows, and we don't want to paint on the eyes or the lips. And, as a matter of fact, on the nostril, I'm going to remove it. So we're going to just come right over here and around the tip of the nose. We don't want to soften that line up around the nose, okay? So you hit the O key again, and you can see what the, this brush has done. And we'll hit the before and after. Oh, that's showing the, the uh, complete before when I retouched this before. So it's trying to show you a default review of what we were. Because I, uh, I retouched this image once before, and, you, and I'll give you a quick peek of what 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 we can do in this situation here. So this is kind of where we're going to end up. Okay. So let's go back to the image we're working on. All right. So now we're going to grab a new brush and we're going to work on the eyes. So we'll click new and we'll go down and I want to do the eye brightening. This is my eye brightening tool and we have auto mask selected again. So I'm going to just brighten the eyes up some. And we're going to look at the overview and see where we're at here. Now if you don't want to use my brightening tool, by all means you can use another method which I'll show you here. Okay, so there's the eye brightening tool. We're going to hit new and we're going to grab the iris builder. And we're going to actually paint in on the iris itself. And what this is is a little bit of brightening and exposure, not much, and it's uh, a clarity. Okay, so we'll come in here and we'll make sure we got a good. We hit the O key to see where we are, and we don't want any up on this eyelash, so we'll just remove that by hitting the Alt key. And you can see if I'm subtracting because there's a minus sign on the inside of the brush. Okay, so hit the O key again. Okay, now well, that's the first round on the eyes. Okay, so we're going to click New, and now I'm going to do my final brightening on the eyes. I want to go to the Exposure, okay? And with the Exposure, what I'll do is, in, if you don't want to work with that mask, you can set a color. So say, we'll go down here and we'll, we'll select the color, okay? And we'll back out of this, and we can paint this whole eye, and it will paint it that blue color, right? And then we'll just pull that color off. Because sometimes that mask is a little bit too bright to uh, work with, and it kind of throws you off a little bit. Okay, so here's, again, we're just brightening. And let's go up here to the exposure, and let's put in around 15%. That's 0.15%. We'll click Enter there. And to get rid of the color, what we do is we'll just grab this and drag it down to the corner, and that will remove any saturation that was on that brush okay or actually on the eye so we'll close that down and now what I want to do is I want to add a new brush one more we're gonna stack it 
new and I'm going to add one more adjustment in the bottom of the eye and to show you where we're at again we'll grab another color blue Ooh, control Z this back out of there I guess the new brush did not take that's why it went back to blue on the whole eye okay so now we have a new brush and we're gonna set that blue again I'm gonna set it down here to this a little lighter okay so now go back to exposure and we'll put our 15 in there again 15 percent okay and hit enter and we're just gonna paint in like a horseshoe shape underneath the bottom of the eye and what this will do is it'll create like a little a glint in the eye and I like to grab a little bit of clarity on that too on that glint All right? and then we'll go ahead and take the color out and I just selected the color so you could see it alright so we'll close that out now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the hair okay so you got all these brushes it's hard to see what's going on when you're in the brush tool so we're going to click new and we're going to grab the hair builder okay so if you use the hand tool by the space bar you can adjust it so what I like to do is I'm going to basically turn this uh, flow down to halfway roughly halfway and I'm just going to go ahead and apply it all over the hair and it will start to make this hair pop out a little bit okay and then I'll come back over the highlights of the hair with the brush at a hundred percent it's real subtle but it makes a big difference okay so we're gonna go ahead and click new for a new brush and we're gonna change this flow up to 100 percent okay so I'm gonna resize my brush down and now I'm gonna start grabbing in some of these highlights here and painting on the highlights you can see it makes the darker areas darker and the lighter areas lighter and I'll come around here come in here and we'll paint in here remember we don't want to paint on the face so we'll have to look at our mask to see what we've done you can see how it picked up those highlights in the hair let's go ahead and grab these right here wrap around the face I'm just trying to sculpt the hair around the face and just draw your attention to it how beautiful her hair is okay so we're gonna hit the O key and that will give us our mask you see we missed a little bit of highlight there okay so now what we can do is hold the alt key and we'll just erase any of this that we don't want to be like on the face and we'll come down here I'm just going to paint right on the edge there doggone it <laughs> okay let's add that back I'm going to pull some of this out of the black in the centers Just give it some high and low spots in her hair. I can kind of see that well, there's a, you know, these blonde patches in the center. And just give it some texture by working it in. And you know, you don't have to do it this way. You can do it any way that you want. This is the great thing about post working and development. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this O key. Okay, and now you can see 
she's got some serious highlights going on in her hair. Okay. And the last thing we'll do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use my lip gloss brush on her mouth, actually on her lips. So we'll hit the brush, we'll hit new, and we'll come down and I'll grab my lip gloss builder. And I'm not going to use the whole lip, I'm just going to go on the shiny areas of the lip around this edge. And maybe a little bit up on top here. And just in the shiny areas of the mouth. Not the whole thing. Alright. So, looks like we're going to go into Photoshop now. So let's zoom this to fit. Okay, you can see that it's a pretty dramatic change already. So let's finish up in Photoshop. So to get into Photoshop, you can hit Control E and Control is Command on Apple or Mac, and it will hand this image off into Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do with the image in here is we're going to add. Well, doggone, I wanted to bring it as a smart object, so I'm going to close this. See, even people make mistakes. So, yes, we want to close it. No, we don't want to save the changes. We'll drop this back down. And we're going to right click. And we're going to say edit in. And we're going to open it up as a smart object. The reason I'm going to do this is because you can apply smart filters to it. And I can have more control over the filters. Okay, so now we have it as a smart object with this icon. It opens up faster, too. Um, so, let's start off with filter that I like to run which is the uh, portraiture plugin okay I'm gonna bring this up here let's zoom it to a hundred percent okay and by default that's fifty percent there's a hundred percent by default you can see that it applies a skin softening to the whole face and it masks off where the eyes are but we'll get rid of any masking that it might have missed. So we'll click normal there. That looks like about the skin softening that I want to add. This is the before. Well, we retouched in Lightroom, and this is after. We can still see texture in the skin. That's fine. Okay. You still see the lines in her forehead. They're not all the way gone. Okay. So let's click OK here, and then it will bring it in to Photoshop. Okay, so let's zoom up a little bit here. So we're going to hit the Z key. Zoom in. And you can see that it applied a mask automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and take away a lot of this on the hair, the eyes, and the lips, and stuff like this. So you say if you have your paint chips at the wrong colors on them. If you hit the D key, it will set these paint chips back to default. And since this is a white mask, we need to be painting in black to hide it. So we're going to hit the X key to flip it. Now we're painting with, with black. And you're going to hit the B key to pull up the brush. Okay, so there's our brush tool. There's the opacity and the flow. I usually leave the opacity at 100% and adjust my flow over here to whatever I need to. In this case we're going to be at 100. So we're just going to take this mask off the hair. I'm going to take the mask off the eyes. And if you want to see what the mask looks like, you can do that. You can control click it and pull up the mask. So let's pull off anything that's on the lips and the teeth. Okay, you can see that. And there, and I like to pull it off the nostril. The nose. Okay, I'm going to zoom her small so I can get a bigger brush and start to work. So we'll pull up the brush. We'll just pull it off all of her hair. 
Well, there's one thing I did miss when we was in Photoshop or Lightroom, and I wanted to colorize her face to match her chest because her face and her chest doesn't really match her uh, face. We'll do that after we go back in to Lightroom. Okay. So if we think we've painted over the face, we can just zoom this brush down, hit the X key, and go back in with white, and you can hit it again. I'm going to zoom in and make sure we can clean off the uh, eyebrows. So X, we're going to paint these eyebrows because I do not want her eyebrows to be soft. Okay, I don't want her eyelashes. None of this to be soft. And you can see the mask. If we take the mask away, you can see where it's being applied. Okay, so let's go back to our brush tool. Now I'm going to take the flow down a little bit to maybe like 30% so I can build it up. And with a soft brush, I'm going to just paint right here on this eye because I think that's a little soft. Okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create like a glow to her. Okay. How to do that is we're going to go into the channels and when you're in channels, let's zoom out a little bit here so you can see what's going on. When you're in channels, you can select any one of these channels. And in this case, we're going to select the green channel. Okay. With this selected, I'm going to hit edit. Actually, I'm going to select all. Okay. And then I'm going to hit edit and copy. And then we're going to go back into the layers panel. Okay. I'm going to create a new layer and then I'm going to edit and I'm going to paste that layer in. Okay, so that pasted that layer in. And now we're just trying to create this glow, okay? So, we're going to change the blend mode to luminosity, which is all the way at the bottom it came off the screen. And I'm going to bring the opacity down to say like 10% or so. Zoom in just a little bit here. Okay, so we'll set this opacity to right around 25. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to put a blur on this. So we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll put around an 18 to 20 percent blur on there. Or pixel blur, not percent. So you see how it's starting to glow on the face? All right. And then we're going to run a curves adjustment. So image adjustment curves. And there's some presets in here. And let me see if I can move this out of the way. And we're going to go down to the strong contrast preset. Now you can see that that glow starts to really put a pop on her face. Okay. But see, it's applied it to the eyes and everything. So I can show you what this layer is doing here. So there's that glow that we're looking for. But we don't want it applied to the eyes and the mouth and the hair. Maybe not so much, it doesn't matter on the hair, but we just definitely don't want it on the eyes. So what we'll do is we'll apply a layer mask, just like in the smart filters. We'll remove it off. So we'll click on the layer mask. We'll grab our brush tool and painting in black right here. We'll go ahead and paint on the eyes and you can see that they pop right back in to place like they should okay so just like I said we'll just remove this all off the eyes we'll take it off the teeth and the mouth okay take it off the eyebrows when I say take it off it means we're gonna paint in black and reveal actually conceal the mask it's kind of where black conceals and white reveals so we're going to be concealing that mask okay so we can come in here with our flow let's jump our flow back up to 100 and go back over those eyes where we need to be okay so making all kinds of mistakes tonight guys okay so we're at 100 let's pull this and pull that off yeah, just move the whole mask. So we're 
I need to select this mask. And now we're gonna, just going to paint that away off the hair. Now, dun, 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 dun. Okay, paint it off the earring. Because, you know, we just don't need it to be like that. All blurred. So we'll zoom. So I can do this quickly. So hit the B key for the brush, make it bigger, and just pull it off that blur off the clothes and all that kind of stuff. Off the hands. And if you want that dreamy look, that glowing look on the face and the hair and stuff, then just leave it on there. Okay, so this is looking pretty good here. Let me use the hand tool to move it around. We can look and see. All right. So now if you want to change the effect of that glow, it's a matter of just changing the opacity. You don't want to go up that high, but uh, say if you want to take it away or just add a little bit of glow, you can add 16%, you know, up to, you know, 25%. It gets a little bit too fake up here at the forty percent, but somewhere around twenty to twenty five percent I think that that's where I like it, so this is with it off, and this is with it on. you know it's a lot of work to get to where we are there, but that's where it is, okay, so that is the filter, and say this if you want to put the glow back on the hair, all you have to do is paint it back on, just paint it in white, and it will reveal that again. And one last thing I want to do is I want to do a, like a lighting effect. Okay, so what we'll do is we're just going to grab and make a curves adjustment. Select curves, and instead of grabbing somewhere in the center, like some people like to, you know, do an S curve, what I would like to do is just drop the whole brightness of the screen. This is halfway, below halfway. Okay. So there we're, we're below halfway, okay? And we'll select that mask, and we're using the brush tool, okay? We're going to paint in black and reveal it like she's got a spotlight on her. I want a soft brush. So if you hold down Control-Alt, and that's Command-Option on a Mac, and drag up and down, you can have a soft brush, okay? And the flow, you can leave it at 100 you like if you find it's harder to get the effect you can go down to 35 and just build the effect and we're just going to paint in like a spotlight effect on the subject I'm just going to go ahead and go up to 100 okay Maybe a little bit around her on her hands put on her clothes If you don't like the way it looks, just hit the X key, and that will switch your paint swatch, and you can just go back in and paint again. Okay, so hit the X again, and we'll just kind of come in here, and just paint around that face. And if it's too bright, you can just grab the opacity, and drag it out and bring it into where you like it. It's also one way you could do a create a vignette, okay? So there we have that. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna do file save and that will bring it into Lightroom. You'll see it coming in just a second. loading in now okay so there we have our copy so this is zoom it to fit there it is now I want to do one last thing and that's make her face match her chest okay so we'll do fill okay so we're gonna go back into the brush tools And we're going to select new, okay. And I'm just going to go into exposure. Doesn't matter where you're at. Just make sure everything's zeroed out, okay. 
and with auto mask on flow at 100 percent with overlay on just hit the o key we're just going to go in and paint over her whole face except her eyes and her you know just leave all that out again i'm sorry for such a long video i knew this was going to be a long one okay so the goal here is to get her face to match her chest because her face is a little bit whiter than the rest of her and I can make the chest match the face but I don't want her face to be white I know that she had been out on a job all day doing a wedding because she's also a photographer and I think maybe uh, her makeup could have wore off some or something after all day because this is like late at night like 10 at night and she started early in the morning so let's make sure we don't have any up here on the hair let's back that off it doesn't matter if we have a little bit of an edge we just want to make sure that we're not going to color anything that we don't want such as the hair so go back in and paint that again okay that looks pretty good so now we're going to hit the O key and we're going to come down here to this color box and we're going to select in this orangish round color basically the higher you go the more saturated it is the lower you go the less saturated it is okay so let's move this let me X this off for a second and I want to say fit if you look at it too close up you can't see what's happening so we're going to with that brush selected we're going to select that color again and we're going to go in between this orange and this red and we're just going to kind of hold it to where you kind of visually see that her face matches her chest okay and that's all we're doing is creating this little color overlay on her face and I think somewhere around there let me zoom in a little bit because I can see a little bit down here let me just get this hand tool and move her up just to here. I think that's pretty darn close. Maybe it's a little red. But you kind of get the idea how we can color a face. So hit X and say if I select this brush and I hit delete, you can see that there's the the paler color face and control Z there's the warmer color face so I selectively changed her skin tone inside Lightroom so that's it let's look at the uh, let's turn the brush tool off see her skin's nice and soft she's got a highlight effect her hair's been done her lips got lip gloss on them so let's look at this image there's the original image Let's reset it back to where it was normal. Reset now. We just got so much stuff going on. I'm really pushing this computer hard. Okay, so there's the original image, and here's the one we just did. She looks a lot different. I want to thank you all for enduring this video, this 40 minute long video, and uh, I appreciate you stopping by my blog today, and hopefully this will help you see what retouching is about and the capabilities that these tools have to offer you inside Lightroom and Photoshop. So again, thank you for coming by the blog, and until next time, we'll see you soon.